Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be solving the leak code question. Check if two strings, uh, two string arrays are equivalent. All right, so we're going to be given two string arrays. One of them is called word one, and the other one is called word two. Return true if the two arrays represent the same string, and false if otherwise. A string is represented by an array if the array elements concat concatenated, sorry, in order forms the string. Okay, so the question itself is really simple. So in this case, we're given two word arrays. So in this case, word one and word two. So word one has A, B, and C. So those are the two substrings that it has. And the entire word that this formed is going to be A, B, plus C. So in other words, it's going to be A, B, C. Now in this case, word two, the word this forms is going to be A plus B, C, which is again, nothing else but A, B, C. So in this case, both of them ends up giving us the same string, which is A, B, and C, and A, B, and C. So this is one way to solve the question, and doing that in Python is really simple. So what we do, what you would do is you would form the entire word one, and you would form the entire word two, and if they're equal to the same thing, you return true, and if they're not, then you end up returning false. Okay, so let's just see how that looks like in Python, it's really simple. So you could use something called the dot join function, so dot join. And what exactly do you want to join? So you want to join everything inside of word one, okay? And this only works with strings, by the way. So in this case, what we're telling the uh, function to do is we're, we're going to go to each of the elements and we're going to join them with each other. And it, between of it, while we're joining it, there's going to be no space. So in this case, we had A and then we had AB. So what would happen is we would have A and then we would join AB to it. So now we would have AAB, right? So another example, just so you can understand how the function works, is if you put a space over here, now how it would look like, so let's say we had a comma a b, then in this case, when you're using the dot join function, you would, our string would look like a, and then when we're joining the two different elements, there's going to be space between it. So there's going to be a space and then a b. But we don't want the space, so we're going to remove that, and now our final output is going to look like this. So all we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing with word two as well. So uh, strings dot join and then word two. And all we're going to do is we're going to check if they're equal to the same thing. Now, if they are equal to the same thing, then we're going to return true or else we're going to return false. In simple words, we can just return whatever this ends up outputting. So if it's equal to the same thing, it's going to return true. So if you submit this, it should get accepted. Right, so over here, we're going to look at our second solution. And the main difference over here is going to be, so in our first solution, what we saw is that uh, we formed the first uh, uh, word and we also formed the second word and we compared them. So the uh, space complexity for that would be big O of n, where n is equal to the length of word one and big plus big O of m, which is where m is equal to the length of word two. So that takes up extra space. But we want to try to have a solution which does not take up any extra space. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to have four pointers. So instead of just explaining to you how the solution works, uh, let me just show you how you can come up with it and how it's a really simple intuitive solution actually. Okay, so let's just look at example one. And the solution is, the basic idea is that we're going to compare each character with each other and if the characters at this point are not going to be equal to the same thing, then in that case, we're going to end up returning false directly. But if, so by the very ending, if none of the characters are different, then we're going to end up returning true. So basically, in this case, we're going to compare the first character of word one with the first character of word two, which is A and A, and they're equal to the same thing. So we keep moving on. Now, the next character of word one is B, and the next character of word two is B as well. So in this case, they're the same, so we keep moving on. And finally, C and C. Now, doing this is not as easy as just putting two for loops or putting a for loop and just comparing the two differences. Because in this case, uh, one simple example is that B over here is at the zeroth index of word one, and inside of the zeroth index, it's at the first index. Now, for word two, B is at the first index, and inside of the first index, it's at the zeroth index. So as you can see, we have two different pointers uh, telling us where our value actually is. So kind of using that, we can use two pointers to actually move across our word uh, and tell us what the character we're currently on is. Now to do that, we're going to have two pointers and we'll call them i and j. So i over here is going to be iterating over the words themselves. So for example, i would be going over a, b, then i would then go to c, and so on and so forth. So it iterates over each of the elements, okay? Uh, another example, just so you can understand, over here, I would go to ABC, 
then it would do D and then D E F G. Okay, so that's what I does. Now the second variable is going to be J. Now J is gonna iterate over inside, so inside of each of the elements. So basically, um, when the, our I values over here, J is first going to be at A, then it's going to be at B, and that's it because there's only two elements. Now another example is over here. When our I is at D E F G, we're gonna have a J value which iterates over these values. So we we'll first go to D. Then it will go to E and then E, I'm sorry, F and then finally G. So that's what J is going to be for. So finally, what's basically happening is that we're going to have I, which goes over the substrings themselves, and J, which goes into each of the characters or iterates over each of the characters. We're going to have that for word one and for word two, and we're going to keep comparing those two characters with each other. If they're not equal to each other at any point, we directly return false. Okay, so doing this should be pretty simple, and let's just go over it real quickly. So we're going to have I1 and I2, and 1 is going to refer to word 1, and 2 is going to refer to word 2. And simultaneously, we're going to have J1 and J2. All four of these values are going to be have a value of 0 for the beginning. So what that means, for example, uh, when I1 is equal to 0 and J1 is equal to 0, we're going to whatever is at the 0th index, so which is ABC, and inside of ABC, we only go to the character at the 0th index, which is this value of A. Perfect, okay? So, and again, that would happen to J2 as well simultaneously. So now we're going to go inside the while statement, and the statement's going to be pretty, sim pretty simple, sorry. So while A1 is less than the length of word 1. So that's one condition, and the other condition is while I2, sorry, not A, I2, sorry. So while I2 is less than, sorry, the length of word 2. Okay, so that's going to be our condition for the while loop. So over here, what exactly we're doing? So like I said earlier, we're comparing the two characters. So that let's do that. So if let's go to word one, and in word one we're going to go to substring. So I one, and inside of the substring we want to go to the specific character. So that is going to be J one. So if that is not equal to the same thing, but for word two. So let's just copy it over actually. So this is going to be word two, I two, and J two. So they're all going to be word two. In word 2, we go to I2 and then J2. So if they're not equal to the same thing, the characters are different, then what we do is we directly just end up returning false. Perfect. So after doing this, um, let's say that the characters do be the, uh, are the same thing, then we want to iterate over to our next values. So in this case, we're going to move our J pointer. So let's see how that looks like. So J1 plus equals 1 and J2 plus equals 1. We're mov moving both of them to the right by 1. Okay, perfect. So now we have these two uh, values, but now you, you want to notice one thing. So we would actually go out of our index. So in this case, when J1, so uh, in the beginning, J1 has a value, sorry, J2 had a value of 0. Now J2 would have a value of 1, but there is nothing at the first index inside of this over here. There's just one value. So we actually have to accommodate for that. Now, what exactly are we going to end up doing? So, well, in simple words, uh, we're done with everything over here. That's what it's basically telling us when we don't have anything at the index J. So what we're going to do is we're going to move I to the right. So I2 is now going to move to the right. And we're also going to reset our J value to the zero index because, well, we want to start off at the very beginning. So it's pretty simple. And let's just see how we can do this. So what we're going to do is if J1 is equal to the length of word one. Now inside of word one, we want to get the length of the specific substring. So that is going to be I1. So this gives us the length of the current substring we're on. So if J1 is equal to that, that means we've reached the very ending of it. And what we need to do is we want to move I1 to the right by one. And also we're going to reset our J1 value to zero. So we're going to do the exact same thing for J2, so I'll just copy it over. So uh, this becomes J2, this becomes J2, sorry, I2, J2, Word2, and I2. So all of them, instead of I1, it becomes I2, that's it. Perfect. Okay, so finally, uh, this should be it for our while loop over here. And at the very ending, we're going to end up exiting our while loop. So if we don't end up returning a value false, then that means that we could possibly have an answer. Now, it's not guaranteed that we have an answer. So how exactly do we know if we have an answer or not? So to check whether we do have an answer of true, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do is if I1 is equal to the length of word one, and, sorry, um, and I2 should be equal to the length of word two. Now, what exactly does this mean? 
So when it's equal to the length of word one and I2 is equal to the length of word two, that means that we've already checked all of the characters that are available inside of our conditions that we have, right? So we've already checked all of the characters inside of the words that we have. So we've already checked all of those characters and now all that is left for us to do is return true because we've checked all the characters. We did not return false uh, even after checking all the characters. So that means we do have the same strings. So in that case, we directly just end up returning true and that should be it for our solution. So, oh, and if this is not the case, well, you end up returning false, okay? So let's just do that, return false. Okay, and this should be it for our solution. If you submit it, this should also get accepted. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.